What is going on, everybody? It is your boy James here from Triple Threat FIFA, and today I am here with episode number 25 of the Southampton Cream. But I've just been, I've recorded so much, edited and edited so much in the past few days, I can barely keep up with the episodes. But uh, the first thing that happens in this episode is that Todd Kane wants a bit more on the wages, and I didn't really understand. And you see, he, he's already on 7k a week, and he wants 7k a week. So, uh, I don't really know what was up with that. Maybe he just wanted uh, an extension, but um, hey ho. And um, I mean, we give him, we go ahead and give him just a one year deal and a important first team player. And this is the rest of the summer, about six more games. Uh, it's a busy time of the year. Thank God, you know, there's no 20. Play on the Christmas, uh, bo play on Boxing Day, and then play two days later. That would really suck, but um, we do face Swansea here as part of our f first game. Of our three nation teams, uh, yeah, I, I think it's like the title is like three, three teams, three nations, and we're playing, you know, one from Wales, uh, one from England, and one from uh, Portugal. And this episode, and uh, this is the Swansea lineup, you know, Jefferson Montero, Dyer, looking to provide wits. So our fullbacks are gonna have to be on point, and Wilfred Boney. Uh, us all basically all our, all our defense is gonna have to be on point. And thankfully, Popov was on the bench. But uh, we lined up very we lined up with a strong lineup. Yoshida playing a left back. He's getting a rare game just because uh, Target and uh, Bertrand. I think Bertrand was tired and um, Target's injured. I think. But uh, Swansea started off with uh, the first goal, and uh, it wasn't all that. It's kind of scrappy. Uh, but it took a took a deflection on the way in, and um, maybe you know maybe the GBS goal panel we're gonna give it to uh, Fraser Forster as an own goal. But um, yeah, some shocking defending early on. I mean, he shouldn't have shouldn't be able to have that much space. I know. I think that's Kirchhoff tries to cut in and uh, you know get there, but uh, he doesn't. And uh, yeah. But uh, straight after that, Shane Long's on the ball here. He beats everybody and does one of our trademark scores right after kickoff goals. And I don't know what is up with that, but we just seem to score at least one every uh, episode or every two episodes. I swear, it's just, I don't get it. I think it's because all the midfielders push up, so, and I have fast strikers, so I just end up running in between them, beating the fence with ease, and then, you know, shooting isn't really that hard, because uh, now that goalkeepers are awkward now, um, shall we say, uh, it's it's very easy to score um, goals now, but as you can see, some sh horrible defending allows Boney to get through, and he almost put a 2-1. Um, so that's what I knew what what what, what we were going to be focusing on training ground for our Champions League match. But Tadic is on the ball here, knocks it through to Long, beats rounds the goalkeeper and slams home to make it two one to the traveling Saints. And uh, this is what we needed. We need a um, <clears throat> we need a we need a big win here uh, as we're going into a. Uh, uh, Champions League, our final group game, and you know we kind of need to win it. I mean, we've already qualified, but you know it'd be nice to finish top of the group in our first season, and we gotta win it. So we need to have our confidence. And uh, you know, Swansea really didn't let up the pressure. And they, you know, they turn on the heat. Uh, Danny Ings with a very good chance here, but eventually, but as it, it's hard to see, but it, it took a um uh, a block, and uh, that's and Boney came close in the 58th minute, but. You knew it would happen, Popov. You just, you just knew it was gonna happen. I knew as soon as he get, he was gonna get subbed on. He was gonna score. It was in my, in the back of my mind, and I just, I just, oh, I was horrible, hor kind of horrified. But uh, as you can see, my Yuka, who replaces the injured Danny Ings, he gets through everybody, rounds the goalkeeper. But ends up hitting the side netting, and that's full time. Really suck because in the 90th minute, our grudge player gets a goal, and um, you know it's right in the 90th, so it really sucks. But uh, those are the 
game. Then the other games, and for some reason, Tranmere and Pete were playing Peach Bra, Watford, Norwich, and then, you know, the Wigan game. I don't even know what happened there, but uh, eight days, uh, Danny Ings is going to be out for, and three weeks for Will Hughes. So that kind of uh, a two two a disappointing 2 2 draw, and uh, some two injuries doesn't really help, but uh, we did face Sporting CP here at St. Mary's, hoping to bounce back. Oh, uh, and hoping to bounce back and get to three points here so we can finish top of our group because, you know, that's what we want to do. And, uh, you know, we've already qualified. It doesn't really matter for us, uh, but it, everything is is in play for uh, Sporting and Galatasaray because, you know, Sporting win here and get a huge victory and, you know, so Galatasaray wins. Wow, Barcelona could be end up shockingly... You know, the second for the, this Barcelona could end up not qualifying, but uh, we are definitely going to qualify. So that's so I really didn't feel the need that I had to play a strong lineup, and uh, y y you would have just seen it. But uh, while I was talking, but uh, I think Sporting CP, I I I don't know a whole lot of whole lot of the team. I know William Carvalho, Rube Tricio, Freddie Montero. You know, I I guess that I I'm guessing they played a fortunate lineup because they really needed the win, and. Uh, well, it didn't start well in the 22nd minute. They grab a goal, and uh, you know, I mean, they were they were pro they probably had that feeling where if they didn't qualify, at least they get into Europa League. So they need to to get a um, big win here, big money, big money, big money, you know. And uh, sadly, it didn't start off well. Just under the armpit of Fraser Forster, and uh, there's really nothing he could do a whole lot about that. But um, Ryan Bertrand <sighs> going on one of his daring runs forward. Uh, eventually, it event the ball in eventually ends up with my Yuka, and Ryan Bertrand, one of the players you thought would never score uh, in a Champions League game, gets a goal. And you know he did this last year. He pushes up from left back, and he grabs the most unlikeliest of goals. And it's just it's it's nice to see because you know I want my um, fullbacks to have that um, uh, attacking philosophy. I want them to. Uh I, you know, I really want them to to get up to help to help out the um the forwards, you know. But I really didn't expect him to be on the the scoring end, especially as that kind of goal. I mean, right between the near post and the goalkeeper. If that had missed, I you know, it, everything could have changed. But uh, Ryan Bertrand just gets his first goal of the season and the Champions League, and hopeful to many more. Maybe he can get the golden boot. But uh, that's how the game finished. A uh, one-one. Uh, draw here with, with the team from uh, Lisbon. I think they're from Lisbon. No, it's Benfica. Any, anyways, the, the team from Portugal and those are the other lineups. Galatasaray does lose to Bar two one to Barcelona, so um, we do qualify, but we end up second. I don't know when I'll show that uh, table. I don't think it's in this episode, but uh, as you can see, um, some stuff happened, and uh, the board does give us ten million for reaching the next round of the cup and I just had one thought in my mind go ahead and get a youth scout and um, we can go ahead and find some nice young players but uh, he I think it will we'll, I think I show it in the next episode uh, what he does you know I think he comes back to us and says I'm ready so just deploy me wherever but uh, we, we did face Aston Villa not what we wanted to do Face a team who's top of the table. I mean, they're they are only four points ahead of us, but uh, we I really don't want them to be kind of running away. I don't want to say running away with the league as it's December, but you know it is December, and that you know if it's if it's widened to seven points, it's gonna be tricky to get back. So I really need to take all three points here, so we can only be one point behind. And you know, at one point, everybody drops at least a point during dur during the year. I don't think there's ever been a season where it's just been a, th you know, just been three. It's just been, you know, 38 games played, 38 games won. That would be amazing if we could do that. But uh, as you can see, Shane Long, the Irishman, just hanging out in the box in the seventh minute, rounds the goalkeeper and scores to put us 1 0 up here pretty early. And that was, you know, that was nice because uh, early leads are pretty much everything, you know. Um, if you know if you're one nil up first, you have the advantage. So we really needed that, especially Aston Villa top of the table, and uh, you know probably confidence probably wasn't that high after our disappointing Europe action. But um, yeah, but 
Anyways, after all that Aston Villa pressure, um, they would eventually score here with Charles and Zogbia, and sadly, it's 1-1, and I didn't want it to be 1-1, but it ends up being 1-1, so whatever, and um, I just, I, I, kind of shocked by that defending, I mean, I think that's the status here, it's easily beaten. But um, that's pretty much how the game finished. And that's going to wrap up the episode. If you guys have enjoyed. I know it hasn't been the best episode. It's really short as well. It's like 8 minutes something. I don't know what happened at the time. But uh, if you guys have enjoyed. Do go ahead and drop a like. And I'll see you guys soon in the next episode. So peace out.